Hey, this is Mr. Buffington, and if you're like me, one of the toughest parts of math is when you start mixing numbers with letters. In other words, word problems. So today I'm going to show you just some steps to solving word problems. Generally speaking, these steps will help you to solve most word problems. And I'll just show you an example word problem and how I would use those steps to actually solve it. So here's a guide for solving word problems. Let's take a look at this question here. It says, Fred and Barney are in the Indy 500. If Fred travels at an average speed of 220 miles per hour, and Barney travels at an average speed of 180 miles per hour, how long does it take Fred and Barney to finish the 500 mile race? So in this lesson, we're going to go through the steps of solving this problem. I'm going to try and show all of the work, which is very important. When you want to solve a word problem, important to keep everything organized and make sure to write down all of the information as you go along. It helps to explain what you're doing. So the first step we're going to call identify. This is when you find out what is being asked. Take a look at this question up top and find out what exactly are they asking. We read through the question as we did. Normally what is being asked is asked in the very last sentence. Here we have how long does it take Fred and Barney to finish the 500 mile race. So that's what they're asking right there. I've labeled it in red. And that's what I would write down here for step one and say, identify what is it they're asking? They're asking how long it takes Fred and Barney to finish this 500 mile race. All right, so that's the first step is identify what it is that I'm looking for. Next, in step number two, I'll call this the strategize step or the step where you come up with a strategy. How is it you're going to solve this question? For me, I look at this question and I notice that there's a distance of 500 miles, there's a speed miles per hour, and it's asking how long does it take. So that's a time. When I see a question that has a distance, a rate, or a speed, and a time, I use the equation that we call the distance rate time equation. So that's my strategy. To solve this question, I'm going to use the distance rate time equation and solve for my unknown variable of time. Time is what we don't know. That's our unknown variable. It's important when we're strategizing to not only say how we're going to solve it, but what it is we're looking for and name any unknown variable. So in this case, I'm going to use the distance rate time equation and I'm solving for the variable time, or t. In step number three, I'm actually going to write down that equation. I'm going to say this is exactly what I'm going to do to solve this problem. In this case, I'm going to use the distance rate time equation. I list what that is. The distance rate time equation is that distance is equal to the rate times the time. I'm using this equation because I'm solving a question about distance, rate, and time. All right, so I've just labeled what is the equation I'm going to use, why is it that I'm going to use this, and then how is it that I'm going to use it in the last sentence. To solve for the time, I'm going to have to transform the equation. So I take my typical distance rate time equation, and I list that down here, and I'm going to transform this equation so that I'm solving for the time. The time is equal to the distance divided by the rate. All right, and you can use several strategies. Basically, you're just transforming this equation by dividing both sides by the value of r. All right, but you can transform in any way you'd like to get this equation set so that now I'm solving for the value of time, my unknown variable. All right, and when I do that, I notice that I am using the operation of division. All right, and that could also be part of you know, how I'm going to use and I'm going to divide. I'm going to use division. All right, so I'm going to use this equation two times to solve for the time each person takes to finish the race. So in the question, remember, I'm going step by step. First it asks, how long does it take Fred and Barney to win? In the second step, I'm identifying, I'm looking for the time. In this third step, I'm going to write the equation. There is how I'm going to look for the time using this equation. And I have to remember, I am using it two times because I'm going to solve for first Fred's time 
and then for Barney's time. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. Actually, answering the question is step number four. In this step, we do the math questions that actually answers the question. So I've got my equation, distance equals rate times the time. I'm transforming that equation so that I solve for the value variable of t for time. I'm going to plug in the information I know. For Fred, we know that the distance he's traveling is 500 miles. So distance comes from there. The rate that Fred is traveling, again, comes from the question. He's traveling at an average speed, or an average rate, of 220 miles per hour. When I substitute that information into my equation, I can use division to solve. And I'll write my answer like this. T is approximately equal to 2.27. It's not exactly 2.27, but it's pretty close. And you don't want to write a huge long decimal. But it would be about 2.27 hours. That's Fred's time. I'll do the same for Barney. First, I'll transform the equation to solve for the distance or for the time. Then I'm going to substitute in the information that I know. I know that the race is 500 miles for Barney, and he's traveling at a rate of 180 miles per hour. And when I divide those numbers, I get that the time is approximately equal to 2.78. It'll take him about 2.78 hours to finish this race. Now that I've answered the question mathematically, I also want to put a sentence out there just to explain what this means. Fred will take about 2.27 hours to finish the race. Barney will take about 2.78 hours. Did I say 2.27? Anyway, 2.27 hours for Fred, 2.78 hours for Barney. That's the time that it's going to take them to finish the race. This step has a lot of the math in it. It's a really important step, and it'll show all of the math work and then have a sentence to sort of answer the, the question. When the question's posed in a sentence, usually you like to answer in a sentence. That's typically the way that, that math equations will work. All right, so now we've finished our work. We're all done. But what if we did something wrong? See, at this point, I'm pretty sure I did it right, but I want to check and make sure that I have done it completely properly. So step five is to do a check. To check my work, I'm going to also put in a table here. And I'm going to substitute the solutions that I got into the original equation and just see if it's right. Another way to say this is that we're doing the inverse operation. If you solved by using division, which we did, we would check by using the inverse or multiplication. Okay, Essentially, we're doing the opposite. But also, you can just list the original equation. You'll put in the solution that you got, which was approximately 2.27, and the rate. And when you multiply those together, you should get the distance. You see? Our distance is, we, it is 500 miles. This one says 499.4. Well, let's go ahead and solve for Barney. Let's see how fast or what his distance was. If we multiply his speed, by the amount of time that it took. The time for Barney was 2.78. And when we multiply them, we get a distance of 500.4. Now, that's not exactly right, 499.4, 500.4. But then, if you remember, the exact time that Fred took, it wasn't 2.27. It was approximately 2.27. And Barney's time was approximately 2.78. So. Given the fact that the solutions were approximated, these checks are very reasonable. All right? And so we've done a, a check of our work just to make sure it was right. And we've done that using the inverse operation. We solved using division. So now we're going to check using multiplication, or the inverse operation. And that's how we do a check. Take your solution, plug it into the original equation, see how it works out. So just a quick recap. First of all, you identify what's being asked. Second, you strategize how to solve the question, naming any unknown variables. Third, you'll write your equation to solve the question. You'll actually answer the question in step four. And then you'll check your solution to make sure that it is reasonable. These are the five basic steps for solving word problems. I hope that this lesson's been helpful for you. Have a yabba-dabba-doo day. <laughs> Take care.